What are the differences between playing in these football clubs in Singapore to Phuket and even to Mill- Millfield in terms of quality experience and level? So Singapore, they didn't really care much about it. It was just like a hobby. In Phuket, it was much more different. They cared about it and we played tournaments. In England, just the level was really hard. Are you experiencing that now? It's a. I mean, I give it my all. Yeah, so you see, watch, you see your try face. Try to keep it under your chin. We're trying, to, we're trying to keep the mic so it doesn't like block your face. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then you're in a good position. And that's why we wear the headphones. Because if you don't wear the headphones, you can start, it's like you hear how I'm talking, you can hear. But yeah. watch when I start doing that. You see how it goes away? Yeah. You see how, that's why you wear the headphones. Yeah. yeah. So that you can control your voice. Because sometimes yeah. you'll start moving around and you might start doing this. But then Norman, you know Norman? Yeah, yeah, he was all over the place. He's all over the place. He was like, <laughs> <laughs> I told oh, him. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> so anyway, hey, so we're recording. Um, we'll take picture. Should we take one now? Okay, just remind me. I always forget <laughs> the picture. Uh, okay, tell me when we're ready. Good. We are ready. Okay, here we go. Welcome to Fruiting Body Podcast with your host Brendan O'Neill. We are a medicinal mushroom company located in here. Phuket, Thailand, and today we have a legend of a guest, Mr. Oliver Michael Judge. Now, Oliver is an international uh, student coming from Singapore, coming to Phuket, and now he's at boarding school at Millfield in the UK. So we're going to talk about that transition and living in these different uh, countries and attending these boarding schools and international schools and his experience along the way. Don't forget smash that subscribe smash that like and let's get this thing started all right let's cut oliver we know each other what a long time now maybe five six years yeah um let's go right back to singapore and let's give a little bit of an introduction about yourself tell us who you are your age um your a little bit about your background and where you came from originally yeah. growing up in singapore so my name is oliver michael judge and i was born in singapore I lived there for seven years, going to SJI International School, and my mom, my mom and dad didn't really want to live there anymore, so they came to P- Phuket. Mm-hmm. My dad found a job here, so I went to uh, British International School, Phuket. So you tr- you're transitioning now. Originally living in Singapore, I mean Phuket to Singapore, it's, it's completely different, right? The lifestyle. Yeah, Singapore's light. Did you prefer it more though? Yeah. Why? Sure. Why was that? Felt more homey and like everything was close to me. But in Phuket, it wasn't. It was a bit spaced out, in, in my opinion. Yeah, to at least be able to 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 get around and see your friends, it's a bit of a, a little bit more difficult uh, in Phuket. And and for the audience, for any parents out there or or children that maybe they're living in the UK or maybe they're living in. Singapore and they're looking to come to Phuket I think this podcast will be very interesting because you can hear the perspective of these different places you've lived for international school what are the benefits the pros the cons the disadvantages and whatnot um so what was your favorite part about going to international school in Singapore if there's you know some some memory that you can reflect on I'd say everyone is like a family in Singapore because we have loads of people from loads of people from different countries and we all respect that and like in thailand it's just it's more of thai people not not much uh not much people from different countries yeah so and this is more at your like your international schools here at the british international school meaning like um in singapore it's more multicultural it's more diverse um, but kind of in, in Thailand, it, it's it, it's very Thai as well, which isn't a bad thing. It's just no. this is the difference. Yeah. Now, um, living, because uh, I was talking to, to your family and living in Singapore, um, for example, like after school and you go home and you're in your, your condo complex, you're easily able to play with your friends. And, and how does that differentiate with being in Phuket? Because it's very different. Because 
in Thailand there isn't much uh, condos, yeah. and like all of my friends are all over the place, and they're not. Sometimes they're not really close to school. Like I have friends in Patong, yeah, friends here, and I live in Lyon, and there's only like a couple of friends there. Yeah, so it's always hard to you know just pick up a football match. You're kind of um, probably most of the time you're having most fun at the campus at the Briti- British International School, yeah, right? School, yeah. Um, okay, so you'd made the transition to Phuket. Now, when you were you're quite young, you probably came over from Singapore to Phuket when you were what seven or eight? Seven. But seven, yeah. Um, when you first came, did you want to come? No. No. What? What? What were you kind of against it? You wanted to stay. You didn't want to leave your friends in Singapore. Yeah, my friends mostly. Yeah, that's that's the main part, right? Yeah. And, and what about the food? You're you're able. Are you okay with the Thai food, or is there a big difference in quality between Singapore and Thailand? Singapore is just class. <laughs> Explain that a little bit. I mean, Singapore's my food. You have like duck rice, mm. like more. Can't really explain it, but like the Chinese food's better because I think like Singapore is more on the Chinese side than Thailand. But like, I'm not a massive fan of the Thai food. It's, sometimes it's a bit too sweet, and sometimes it's a bit too spicy. Uh, do you have any favorite Thai dish that you kind of go to over here, or do you kind of stick to the Western style? I like mutad. Mutad. Yeah. Isn't that, it's just like the fried pork, right? Or yeah, the fried the pork. Yeah, sticky rice. That's really good. Yeah, prod pan. Did you go to prod pan yet? I think they do the mutad. It's just like a pork neck thing type of. Oh, yeah, yeah, I think I've been there. Yeah, yeah that place. So you've come over to the British International School. You got over here at the age of seven. You don't know anyone. You don't have any friends at this point. Did you have any friends living in Phuket or did you know nobody? Yeah, absolutely no. So if you can remember, because again, it's probably five years ago, right? Yeah. Can you remember um, joining the school? How was it? Was it welcoming? Were you able to easily adapt? Yeah, everyone just respected me and they were really kind when... Tried to start a conversation with them. Mm. How, how how do your friends describe you from the British and from the school? What 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 what, what do you think they would uh, uh, say? Who is Oliver Judge? Got no idea. Got no idea. Um, and now you're at the school. I know you're playing football and you're getting uh, quite high, at a high level as well. And their program is amazing. Um, <laughs> What are the differences between playing in these football clubs in Singapore to Phuket and even to Mil- Millfield in terms of quality, experience, and level? So Singapore, they didn't really care much about it. It was just like a hobby. Thailand, they, in Phuket, it was m- much more different. They uh, cared about it, and we played tournaments. And uh, in England, just the level was really hard. Are you experiencing that now? It's a... I mean, I give it my all, and uh, we, well, we have like three teams. We have, of course, the Millfield first team, which I'm in. We have Mid Somerset, and we have the whole of Somerset team. So I'm in two of those teams, but the Somerset team ha- hasn't come out yet because I think they haven't chosen all the teams in Somerset yet. Is it much more physical? Much more. Loads of people, so tall. Yeah, like, that's the thing. And here, just... It's I used to think I was pretty tall here, but... Yeah. Like, the average height of our rugby team, I think it's like 168 in centimetres. And what age group are you playing in now? Are you playing above your age group? No, under 13s, because I am I go to Millfield Prep School. Okay. So there's two different schools. So, like, I'm kind of in middle school, because I'm in year eight. And my brother's in senior school, and that's in a different town. I'm in Glastonbury. He's in Street. Right. That's what that's what your your family was explaining to me as well. Um, h- how about the campus? I mean, I, I saw some pictures. I saw you playing football there as well. I, is there a huge difference between British International School and Millfield in terms of the campus itself? Massive, yeah. How so? I mean, it's more tech here in Millfield. Like, all the stuff is... So high tech, and when we have to get in, we have to use codes and stuff. Uh, in terms of like uh, access passes and, and being able to get around, are you using thumbprints or biometrics? No, we don't have that. But I think we had like an ID card and the ISP yep. to get through the gate. Yeah, and anyone could just show it. Yeah. Yeah. So um, a lot of your friends, they're still here at, at the BIS. 
Um, do we have any shout outs? Like uh, we know Philip, we know Jerry. I mean, have, have you, are you still able to stay in touch with your friends by living over in Millfield? And, and how do you do that? Uh, WhatsApp mostly and Instagram. Yeah. And are you doing phone calls? Is this a weekly thing? Well, I'm not allowed to bring my phone to school. So like the only time I can call them is early in the morning because we get our phone early in the morning. Yeah. Like, and the time I try zone. to call my dad, my mom, my friends. It's quite hard to get all those calls in. So you did that transition. Now this happened. We, we got to be careful with our language here because uh, not swear words, but uh, we can't use words like the C word or you know what I mean? Um, because YouTube doesn't like that. So let's talk it. We'll call it the current situation. Um, it was around summertime. You went over with your mom and you went to go see your, your brother at Millfield and because it's summer and you had the summer off from British International School. Yeah. Um, tell us that story of you went over there with the intentions of what and what happened? Well, we just went over there to see our brother for a holiday. And I, th I think when we spent our, when we had to quarantine, we accidentally came in contact with someone on our flight who did have COVID. So we had to do an extra three days. Who had the, the current situation. <laughs> So that, that, that's the only, I think we'll get away with that word. That's okay. Just YouTube doesn't like it. Okay. So you, 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 you had to quarantine in, where, where did you end up quarantining? I forgot. I'm anyway, some, sure. so you, you went over to see your brother and the, again, this is probably July, June, July. And you had the plans of coming back to BIS for the September semester. But what happened? COVID vaccine. Yeah. Okay. See that, that so when that happened, you kind of got stuck, and you had to then make a decision of whether you want to come back or you wanted to stay. Um, what was going through your head? It, it, were you thinking, okay, I want to stay here, or you wanted to come back? I mean, I didn't want to do online school personally because I don't like doing that, and my learning just gets interrupted. Plus, I have to, uh, I think I have to wake up at like one a.m. to start school, and I don't want to be doing that. Yeah, that would just, it, it's, you'd be much, way too tired. It's much yeah. too difficult as well. So I asked my dad, can I just move to England? And he was like, sure. Yeah, and, and do you think that's the right decision? You're enjoying your, your time now at Millfield? Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I, I could imagine as well, like you, um, you're expecting to at least come, say, come back to Phuket and, and maybe have a proper goodbye with your friends. You have another year because some of your friends, they are still here. Um, but now li living, living in the UK, what about in terms of the weather? Because Phuket's completely different than the UK. Are, are you adjusting to that? Yeah, yeah, a lot. But when I came back here, I was so hot. I was like, how did I live here? So humid here. I can, I can barely breathe. Yeah, that's... Phuket is like that. It takes a couple weeks, and you get adjusted, and then you'll, you're you're fine from there. Yeah. Um, and what? But what about your dog? See, I had I, I was babysitting Nyan for a. Uh, we should. Oh, that's who we forgot. We needed <laughs> Nyan on this podcast. <laughs> um, I was baby, but she's a she was a lunatic. I couldn't handle her. She ran she ran away like five times on me, and like it was too much. Did she come back? She oh yeah no oh, I chased her around the beach for about an hour one day. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and you say she swam. She right? swam. She ran away. I had friends. Tani was trying to uh, feed her hot dogs to trick her, but <laughs> it was a nightmare. Um, so, and, and your dog, when you got back, I mean, because uh, again, living in the UK now, you, you can't be close to, to, to this wonderful dog. Um, just, uh, what, what is, uh, she's a savage. <laughs> yeah, I, lo I love her. Yeah. So when you, when you got to see Nyan, uh, how was that? I mean, is, is this... Um, it's a sacrifice you need to make by not being able to live here as well, correct? Yeah. yeah. I was quite emotional when I saw her. She was like, her ears were up. Yeah. Her, her tail was wa wa waggling around and she was just, she was berserk. She was jumping all over me and jumping all over my brother. Yeah, she is a very loving dog as well. And maybe we'll make a reel. We'll clip this and make a reel with some pictures of uh, Nyan and throw it up on the Instagram. See this dog running around. <laughs> um, now, wh when you're at Millfield, you're, you, you're on a different campus than your brother because you're in this prep school. So what happens next? You, you go through your Millfield prep, and then that allows you to change campus next year or the year after? No, next year. 
like if if you're in year eight, that's the last bit of prep school, and if you're in year seven, you have to do one more year of year eight. And will you do you do you get to see your brother often, even on these two different campuses, or you're kind of no, stuck to yourself? No, I barely see him at all. But I remember we went to like the sports ground, King Weston. Yep. It's like massive, and I didn't see my brother there, but he was there. Because he had some rubbish haircut on him. And I couldn't <laughs> recognise him. He was like a K-pop star when yeah, he yeah. first got his haircut. It was so bad. Yeah, he had some sort of like K-pop perm going on, eh? <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, it was something. Yeah, Dom. Well, he, he's cleaned it up. I, mean, I think he's going for a haircut now, but... <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, he was looking uh, he's looking eccentric, let's say. Yeah, he was rubbish. <laughs> um, how, how is it now that you're living... In boarding school, because I'll explain that a little bit for anyone that's not aware. That when you're in international school in, in Phuket, you have options to board or, or to stay at home. And obviously, two completely different experiences. But now that you are at Millfield, you're boarding. Um, can you explain about what what that experience is like? How many people you're living with? The rooms, the the rec rooms, the maybe the the super the people looking over you as well, and just talk about the entire experience boarding on the living side. I I love boarding because like my friends are all together with me, and the facility set out for us. Where we stay is massive. We have like a nine hole golf course. We have two seven-a-side football pitches and two seven-a-side rugby pitches. We have a basketball court and we have a tennis court, so we can do whatever we want. And about we have four dorms. We have fifteen people, and there are there's one person who comes in and out, so he can day. He's a day pupil and a boarding student at the same time. So that that's what we call like a flexi, flexible. But, like, there's four people in each dorm. The beds are rubbish there. So in your, in your dorm room, you have, you're living with four boys. Yeah. And it's, is it kind of like, how, how big is the room? It's about this size or? It's m- much bigger than this. And then h- how do they divide all your beds? Or do you have curtains? Or how is that, how, what does it look like inside? Well, so you enter. So here's the door. You enter. You have a bed there, bed there, bed there, bed there. Okay. And then the windows are there. I don't know. It's not really. And then, but at night time, really. it's easy to fall asleep. I mean, you guys are so exhausted from the day, or you know, or is it? Uh, is it kind of every night is a uh, sleepover? Kind of a sleepover <laughs> every night because every one of my dorms like my mates. Yeah. But like the other dorms, she's they do my head in. Why is that? I remember like, I think it was one lad named Nicholas. He like came to our dorm, just started shouting. Uh, and forgot who it was, but I remember some per- some per- some person was hiding behind the door, and Nicholas came in again, and then he slapped a slipper on his head. <laughs> Why was he shouting? What was going on? He just wants to wind us up. Oh, he was just trying. Is he uh is he a bigger boy or no? Being a bit of a bully, eh? <laughs> He's not a bully. He's just a bit of a knob. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough though. I mean that that could happen. Um, so you're you're in the, your dorm, and can you explain that that part of the campus a little bit? Do you, do you want some water? Sure. Yeah, get some water in you. Um, so we'll talk about the 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 living, not so much the living conditions, but where you you are are staying. So each dorm will have four. You know, four boys will live in it. How many dorms are there? You said four. There's four. So it's only sixteen people boarding at this prep school for your age. No, not at this prep school. We have five boarding houses, two for the girls and three for the boys. Okay. I stay at the one across the road named Eggley Manor. Mm-hmm. And I think the other boarding houses, well, my boarding house only keeps year eights and the other boarding houses keeps like year eight, year seven to year eight to year five, I think. And are... When you go to class, it is it's co-ed. It's mixed boys and girls as well, right? Yeah. Okay, so they're just separated for the boarding. How many people are actually doing the boarding? Is it most of the kids that are at Millfield, or you said there you have some flexies as well? What well, like what what do you think as a percentage? I would say fifty five percent 
of Millfield Prep is boarding. Yeah. It's quite a lot of boarders. Like when you go into the dining hall, can't really get a seat. You're you're like in different boarding houses and you need to go into other boarding houses seats to get a spot. It's quite filled up. Yeah, it's a, it's it's a packed house there. And yeah. and how is um uh, um when you go to the dining hall, the cafeteria, how's the food or cuz obviously your mom is like, come on, Michelin star top chef. She's so, so good. So now now you you got to maybe take it down a notch. Um how are you getting by with the food? It's horrendous. <laughs> The food is so bad. Like, I, d- I didn't mind some of the food in uh, Thailand because, like, they would serve me some, like, Asian food, which I don't mind. But, like, the Asian food they serve in England is awful. It's really mank. It's so bad. <laughs> what is mank? It's just some disgusting. Bri- some British word. I'm, yeah, I'm not familiar with that vocab. <laughs> okay. Um, but uh, everything else, because you're used to eating your pasta. This is, I know you love this, so it must be <laughs> difficult to 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 adapt as well. But I mean, are you, are you, but you're eating. I mean, you're, you're looking healthy. You're looking good. Yeah. I mean, you've lost your tan. I've lost a bit of weight as well. Yeah. Jeez. Why? Well, you're not eating enough. You'd be surprised. You got a. Car- no, you wouldn't be surprised. In fact, you got a carb load. The food there is garbage. Like I remember having the burgers one time. Red. It was just raw. Just raw. Yeah, yeah. And you're not eating that medium rare crap, no. no. Um, how does it work for the sports side of of, of Millfield and um, the athletic competition <laughs> between different boarding schools? Well, football wise in Millfield, I'm not sure. It's like it's not the best in the whole of England, but I know cricket and rugby is the best in the whole of England at Millfield. But I think football was at least like sixth or fifth. And how many teams um, are you playing in like a league? How does that work between these different schools? Like for the football side? Well, we have like, not sure how many tournaments, but like there's ESPA Cup. Mm -hmm. ESPA Cup is like, it's called like the English Schools Football Association. So it's like the best schools battling it out. And if, if your school reaches the finals, you play it like... Somewhere in the Midlands, like the middle of the England, you prob- you can play at like Stadium of Leicester. Oh, oh, is that what? Oh, oh, what? what so, what is that? is that your Leicester sh- uh, jersey? I haven't seen yeah, that color is. yet. No, it's a. Uh, you had a pink one before. Yeah, pink one. Yeah, the pink one was nice, but this one's better, in my opinion. And the these cups you're playing, are you traveling a lot? How far is it between the schools to play a match? I mean. We haven't traveled so much, but our age group below, I think they traveled to Birmingham. It's not that far from a car, for a car, but on a mini bus, I think it's like three hours and 20 minutes. On a car, it's like one hours and 30 minutes. Okay, so not, not too bad. Yeah. And how are you, how are you um, performing, do you think? Because now, are you, are you, you're not playing keeper? Are you playing, what are you playing now? Just defense? So Center defensive mid. Center defensive mid, and I mean these as these boys are bigger and more physical. Yeah. I mean it's it's a rough position. Uh, how, how do you think you're doing? I think I'm doing okay. I mean, it's quite hard to get into the team because there are loads of people that are challenging. Like sometimes I could be on the bench, sometimes I could be on the pitch. Just depends. And much different than when you were in Phuket, because kind of in Phuket you you were maybe top level or maybe the top top five on your team or something, right? Yeah. And that level of competition is completely different now. Yeah, I think I'm like, we have like 14 players in our team. Yeah. I would say I'm like 10th best. I'm like, compared to all of the players there, I'm not amazing. And wh- where are most of the, where are most, you, you want to have some water, don't worry. Um, wh- where are most of the um, kids coming from at the at the internet at your school at Millfield or just uh, even on on your football team? Uh, is it completely diverse? Could it be from Brazil, Canada, U.S., Sweden, or is there is it mostly people from the U.K.? Mostly people from the U.K., but we have Chinese lad named Ethan, yeah, and we have a Spanish lad called Jacobo, and I think that's like that's it. And they're good? Are they good players? Or? Jacobo is good. Okay. He, 
he could replace me. Mm. Well, sometimes he he does sometimes, and not I do sometimes. But Ethan. Oh, okay. Well, Ethan won't see this. No, Ethan, you're great. Don't worry. We love you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> on on your side, uh, do you have like a, a a very close friend now, or is it mostly just the boys in your dorm? I have very close friends with the boys in my dorm and a lot of people at the school as well. So you want to give them a shout out? Who are we shouting out to here? Who are, who are, Aston Fox, Barrington Hibbert. Yeah, who else? Samuel Cole. Yeah, these guys are legends, eh? People in my dorm, Fernando, Ryan, and Harry. Love you. <laughs> lads, love you. <laughs> so if they see this, they're they're probably going to watch this, this video and... Uh, Oh, yeah, and people in my uh, form tutor. Okay. No, I won't I won't give you their nicknames. Okay, yeah, yeah. We'll keep keep like that. Danny. Yeah. What a legend he is. Perrin. Just. <laughs> just just a legend, yeah. He's just, he's just up there. <laughs> and then Caleb and Tom. Yeah, and what we'll do is on this YouTube, we'll timestamp this, we'll clip this. So when you go to watch this later, I'll call this uh, uh, Oliver's shouts out to friends and you can just click it and they can all see that shout out. You can show them quick and easy. So it's easy to navigate. Yeah. There we go. Um, what are what are some of the um, um, past time things you, you like to do besides, you know, um, these extracurricular activities like football. I mean, at the end of the day, when you finish class and you come back to your dorm, what are you usually doing? Can you walk us through that process? Uh, so we finish school at 3.45. And on a Monday, so on a Monday and Thursday, we have to do games, so like sports. On a Monday, it's rugby you have no other choice you have to do rugby during the day or after school after school okay and then on the thursday it's f you have a choice between football and a rugby and i do football i'm not much of a rugby player because they're just so physical yeah i've never been a i'm more i'm a hockey player but not a rugby player player um and you, you again you have to do these sports and what time you're, you're saying that starts around like 4 p.m and it goes to what five or six four to five we have we have, our, we have our supper, dinner, really early, like 5 p.m. Yep. And after that, we, at 5.30 till 6.30, we do our homework. And I think from 6.30 till 8, we have our phones. And then after that, depends what night it is, we could have sweets or, like, savoury snacks. And then some nights, we could just have, like, hummus and stuff and you get to decide like which what type of snacks you want or is it kind of you can get anything from the 7-eleven or are you just crushing hershey bars what's going on 7-eleven so you having a law <laughs> there's no 7-elevens in the uk no no we have a wh smith okay and uh, but are you able to go to the store or how does that work or or do they you have to like talk to a headmaster or no, so they provide it for us they provide it for you and so every night now, these kids, you're not on your phones all day. What happens between 6.30 to 8? Does everyone turn into a phone zombie, or is it okay? Well, when it was like September, everyone used to go outside because it was light. But after 4.30 now, it is pitch black. So from 6.30 to 8, till eight right now, loads of people are on their phones. And then what are you, are, are you uh, heavy? Are you deep in that TikTok game or what's going on? I'm not allowed to use TikTok. Really? It's a scandal. So what, what do they, do they ban you from certain apps that you're allowed to use or not use? Snapchat, Instagram. They ban, they ban it on your phones, meaning they, they'll look at it and say, hey, this cannot be used. No, we're not allowed to use TikTok. But I just use my 4G to watch TikTok. Uh-oh. Bit sneaky, but like. When when we're on the school Wi-Fi, we are prohibited to. We are not allowed to touch any apps over twelve. Any apps. Yeah, any. Mm. YouTube sometimes gets banned. That is, can't even watch a podcast. Oh my god, we're gonna have to jump on the four G. Maybe maybe uh, I'll have to write a letter to Millfield for this special episode here. Yeah, we might need to. 
<laughs> they'll, they'll, oh, we'll throw it on another server. They can have it on the school server. Get, come on, Millfield. Let's get it on it. Um, now, now you, you're 12 now. You're going to be turning 13 next year as well. You're getting a bit older. You, you, you've got the, uh, you got this co-ed thing going on. What's the love life like, Oliver? <laughs> no, nothing. <laughs> nothing. No, nothing. nothing. No, you, there's not a secret girl out there. No, no. You don't want to give a shout out to someone, or <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. No one. Okay, but are are I don't know because I'm obviously I, I I don't know the younger generation. But what is it like with the kids nowadays? Are they are they having boyfriend girlfriend at this age, or is this banned in the school? Well, so, some people do, but our headmaster, no, the head of year right, Mister Guthrie says it's nonsense to have a boyfriend and girlfriend so at that age yeah yeah so he doesn't allow allow that at all now the head headmaster is that someone completely different do you have someone specifically that is kind of like your dorm supervisor like uh, like almost an assistant or something or they're watching over you we don't have a dorm supervisor but we have house parents and house matrons so the matrons just clean up and uh, give us food at the boarding house and our house parents and sort out everything. Who are these house parents or house matrons? They're they're connected to the kids at the school. They're, they're or they're volunteers or how does that work? Well, the house par my house parents teach at the school. Okay. So, Mr. Mr. Close, one of my house parents, he's the. Uh, what was he? But he's a history teacher and the head of. Year seven and eight, I think. And he'll be the one. No, no, no a deputy a deputy head. He is. Okay, and and these they will come by your room at night and kind of tell you lights off. Let's go to bed. Um, what happens at at? What happens if you're to break the rules? Lights on, phones on. Do you get, I guess, demerits or points or deductions? Do they have a system in place to keep you guys in, you know, from uh, getting out of line? We have demerits, but I haven't got one this year, so. And talk talk about that system. Just what what does that mean? Because in Canada, we've never had that, but I know this is more prevalent in the UK. What is a demerit system? Well, it just it's quite easy to get a demerit. It's just if you act bad and the teacher doesn't like it. But if you get like if you get a merit, that's quite hard. So. A demerit is just, it's quite easy when you're doing it to younger younger people. If you act maybe just a bit too rude, I guess, or a bit mean, you'll get a demerit instantly by one of the teachers. And what does that entail? Like, if, if, if you get a demerit, what, are they going to smack you with a ruler? Are they going to send you to the to a detention center or what? No, it just goes it goes on your school record. Okay, and that's kind of it right there. Yeah. And then eventually, if you were to accumulate too many, um, you could get kicked out of the school, essentially. Yeah. Do you have any stories from the school of, you know, someone getting a merit or demerit and, and something that, uh, you know, the, 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 the gossip of the town? Not really, no, actually. You guys have all, you're all in line. Everything's going swell. I mean, you can act quite bad if you act really bad you can get a sanction okay so sanction i think that sanctions like 10 demerits i think oh wow and that's quite bad uh i think that's the worst but it's quite a few people last year they told me they got loads of sanctions this year i think they're keeping it cool and clean yeah, if they got in trouble in the years Yeah, they've before. turned it down now. And how, how about your brother, Dom? How's he doing? We're going to get him on the podcast, but uh, he's got to get a haircut. But um, um, does he talk to you about his experience? And, and does he does he help you out? Does he share what to do, what not to do? Well, he, d he didn't help me out that much because we're in different campuses. But it's like we talk a bit. And he just mostly talks about his football He's doing well in his football as well. He got sent to an, something called the ISPA trial, 
it's like international schools football association that's like best players from each private school and best the best players there will get picked for the best team best private school team in England one of his mates got picked I think it's Morgan Jones that's his name but uh, my brother sadly didn't get picked. But, he but he's playing really he's well. because he's playing underage as well, right? He's he's playing uh, at a higher level than he should be, right? So sometimes, sometimes. So what what type? I, th- I think they have what is it under 18s, and then he's pro- well, he your Dom is probably what 14, 15 now. Fifteen. Fifteen, yeah. He turned sixteen on March first. Oh, it's coming up. Same same birthday as. <sighs> Your your man, Justin Biebs. He's not my man. <laughs> He's rubbish. <laughs> He's useless. Oh, well, we can't clip that. Anyways, we love the Biebs. We're buying NFTs off him, so he's going to make us some um, serious dough for this podcast. And maybe we'll add a few extra cameras and, you know, call them the Beeb cams. <laughs> <laughs> Might help a bit. Yeah. Um. What What's the... The comparison of the curriculum, Singapore, Phuket, Millfield, in terms of difficulty. Singapore was quite easy. I mean, in Singapore, it was not advanced at all. I didn't even learn multiplication there. It was pretty bad. Thailand, I was just about, just about at the borderline. And in year seven, my learning just tipped. So I was top set in math. I know it's top set in English, so I was doing pretty well in secondary. But the learning in England's quite quite advanced. The the level that the level that they kind of expect you to be at yeah, grab some water, don't worry. Chill out, we're getting comfortable here. We're having some coffees, we've got some fruiting body mugs with a sticker on it that looks okay on camera but not in reality. What do you mean? It's <laughs> well, delightful. It's got, it's got a little bit of a you know, a couple creases on it as well. Now, did you tell your friends, hey, I'm coming on a podcast, I'm going to be famous, I mean, signing autographs at Boat Avenue after, what's going on? Well, I didn't tell my friends, but after this podcast, and if you post it on YouTube, I will tell my friends to watch your video, subscribe, <laughs> and I mean, my my followers are like 11 to 15, it's like, they might not be amazingly interested, but I'll get them into it. <laughs> All right. And, I'll tell them to subscribe. You probably got like 130 people just coming at you trying to subscribe. There we go. Yeah, you got to spread decent. spread this around the school. Say you got to check out this podcast I did on, on Millfield. Smash that subscribe. Turn on that bell notification. Let's go. Yeah. And tell the principal, though. I don't know if the staff should watch this. Yeah, <laughs> I think the staff can watch this. We haven't said anything too bad. We love the staff, eh? Yeah, we love them. They're great. Legends. Legends, yeah. What about, uh, um, um, how, how are some of your, your teachers? Do you get along well with them? Do you have a, a, a favorite teacher that stands out? I don't really have a favorite teacher, but a teacher that keeps faith in me. Uh, it's my math teacher. And I remember at the start of school, I just got put into some, so we, well, we have two bands at our school. Red band and blue band. Red band is for like the smarter people and blue band's for the less worthy. <laughs> in a way. Yeah. I'm in red band and I just got put into some random set. I think it was like set three. And he, I just impressed him so he's like moving me up a set. So I'm tr- and he, he puts a lot of faith in me and my math work. Puts a lot of faith in uh, me and Ethan Lau. Ethan, the uh, Chinese lad in football. He's doing well as well in the math. And uh, what types? What is your favorite subject? Because before I remember you uh, a couple of years ago, um, math was definitely not your favorite subject. I think if I remember correctly. Um, in year f- in year five, I didn't enjoy math at all. But in year six, I was just get I was given challenges, and I quite enjoyed quite quite like that. Mm. And in year seven, my math was good, so I enjoyed that. And I remember just getting ninety nine percent on my test. Kept it cool, kept it professional. I was just like sitting there calm. Everyone went over to me, and they were like, "Oh, you got ninety nine percent." I was just standing there, ice cool. 
Um, how, um, let, let's, let's have uh, some fun questions now. Let's play around a little bit. Eh? Okay. Um, well, this will be recorded and who knows, in maybe 10 years, you can watch it back. Right. So let, let's, let, we'll, we'll cut to this camera. Right. And this will, this will cut to you in a second. And I just want to, to, to give Oliver when he's graduated from, um, Millfield. Give, give him a little speech. What are you going to tell him? You can look right at that camera. You can talk to yourself. You're, you're, oh, this camera here. That's, you're going to be talking to yourself when you can rewatch this. I'm going to appreciate the moment that I've spent at Millfield and all the teachers and students that believed in me. I love them all. And what do you see yourself doing? Do you have any plans? Because you know, I know you talked a lot about uh, uh, football and, and really progressing with that has things changed what what's going on um in terms of what you want to do in your future i mean sports is always my first thing cricket and football don't mind being a cricketer and footballer but aside from that maybe do maybe follow on from my dad mm -hmm. he he did like sports betting he did like some sports betting thing like provided sports data for betting companies, I think it was. Mm -hmm. So like, I quite I'm quite interested in that. So maybe I could uh, follow on, make the judge family proud. Very nice. And and when you're when you're watching the football matches now, I mean, obviously you're supporting Leicester. Um, are you uh, putting some bets on the side with your friends under the table? What's going on? No, no we don't do bets. That, that's good. I remember one bet I made though. <laughs> what happened? Uh, I remember I made a bet on like seven games. Yeah. And I think you were there as well. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I I asked you to put like a like five Canadian dollar bet. Yeah, I think it was something seven small. on seven games, and uh, I was like, I predicted all of the uh, like scores who would win and who would lose or draw. And one of the games, Sheffield United, this was tw 2019. Yep. Sheffield United v Tottenham. I remember I s you put two bets, I think. And one of the bets that I said Sheffield United would win, you put on for a bet. And like the other one where I said y Sheffield United and Tottenham would draw. But you they didn't place the bet. But they but they, they ended up drawing, right? Yeah, they did. Yeah. And I would have what I, I told you at the start to yeah. it was going to be a draw. I ended up winning seven hundred and seventy five <laughs> Canadian dollars from that bet. I was going berserk. <laughs> but I remember just looking at my phone, saw all the results. I just I went up to I went to my mum and I was start I just started to scream. <laughs> like my dad woke up and he was like, "No way." Yeah, I mean that's uh, for someone to make that many that that prediction, and especially your first time, it's a uh, it's uh, unnatural. It's as just well. it's quite natural actually. Oh yeah, got on my dad's jeans. <laughs> I think my dad was like banned from betting in Europe because he was so <laughs> good at it. Well, let's not talk too much about that. But um, let's jump ahead to to uh, let's jump jump ahead to a couple more of your hobbies and especially your passion for Leicester. So wh wh why, where does this passion for Leicester come from? And chat us, tell us a little bit about that. Well, my dad's from Leicester. Mm. He was born in Market Harbour. And every time I go to England, I stay at Leicester. I stay, well, I stay in Leicester Sheer. I don't stay inside Leicester. I stay, well, I stay at a, ca uh, a village called Corn very close to uh, Loughborough, which you might know, very good sport, sports university. And uh, mostly just watching Leicester games in Leicestershire is just, and I love the atmosphere at Leicester. Did, you go, did you go to any games recently? Re rec uh, we, I went to a, uh, what do you call it? A friendly game against Villarreal. It was a good game, but it was a bit sad because our like best defender. That's why we're shocking at defending this season. Our best defender. I think he broke his shin, oh, yeah. and he could have got like an ACL or something like that. And he was like, and 
he was in agony on the pitch, and I just remember seeing that I was getting a bit teary eyed. Yeah, and, and w- when was that? Not too long ago, then, no. No, not that long ago. Maybe like two months ago. No, no, no not two months. And, and how's your team doing right now? We're eighth place. Uh oh, you getting relegated? <laughs> go Leafs, go! <laughs> no way, relegation. <laughs> no, relegation's not in the uh, not in the records. No way. We're not gonna get relegated at all. Okay, okay. No, I'm just playing. I don't really watch football too much. Yeah. Watching more hockey, UFC, but um, I don't have time for football. It's uh, it's hard to follow this uh, this funny sport. I'm a keeper, all right. I'm just diving around and. Yeah. So um. Now, now that you are in boarding, and it's uh, obviously much different than being at home at international school here in Phuket, uh, what are some of the things that, that you miss most about not being able to, you know, I guess maybe be so close to home? My mom's food. Yeah. I mean, my mom's food is just so good. I can't, I can't live... A month without my mum's food. Somehow I'm surviving. Not surviving pretty well though because I'm losing quite a lot of weight. But I'm munching it down right now. <laughs> and definitely like just my parents' company. Miss that a lot. Would you give any advice to kids that are going to make that transition into their first boarding school experience? What would you tell them? Think about your decision. Are you willing to get away from your parents? Are you? Do you want to be risking this opportunity? And if you do, you will love it. Mm. You will definitely. Was it difficult at first to make the decision and and say, okay, I'm gonna do it, or was it quite quick? Quite quick, actually. I'm not. I'm not sure why, but like, I just kind of wanted to do boarding since mm-hmm. my brother could do it, and he said it was really good. How was that first week boarding? Because now you've had that transition. You're 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 used to living with your parents the whole time, and now you're living on your own. Um, the first week, what were some of the emotions you were going through? And I think that's relevant and important because a lot of kids that when they do go to boarding school, they're probably going to feel something similar. They they all of the people in my boarding house that didn't board, they felt homesick. I didn't feel that. I was just feeling a bit sick and tired of people just running up to our dorm. And what, just causing havoc? Yeah, it was so annoying. So w- why were they doing that? Because you're the new kids and they were trying to... No, no, no literally everyone in our boarding house is new. Mm. Wh- I mean, I don't know. They just think it's funny to wind us up. We'll just batter them after. <laughs> what, is that? what do you mean you're going to batter them after? I mean, they'll end up in pretty good, pretty bad condition, actually. Might need to go to the toilet and uh, rub a few... Rub a bit of blood off their head. Oh, God. <laughs> well, that only happened once when uh, I was Spanish lad, Fernando. Yeah. Like, drew, like, some ball at uh, this guy's head who was wearing glasses and his, like, glass glasses broke. And the part of the glass just, like, dug into his skin. Was there any demerits? What happened? No. Nah. Just kind of... Yeah, just let it go. Kept it under the rug, right? Swept yeah, it away. Just let it go. Mm. Um, are you guys able to be playing uh, FIFA, Fortnite? Any? Is there any gaming systems you guys got going on over there? Like, what else to keep yourself busy? Fortnite is rubbish. You bought the Fortnite headset computer. You're ready to be a pro. What happened? That that was for uh, Call of Duty. Okay, so what what happened to the Fortnite life? That it's j- that game is just full on gone. It's so bad. FIFA's yes. good though, FIFA. <laughs> Hans yeah. what? Yeah, I agree. Well, not garbage. It's garbage, it's yeah, finished now. Garbage, yeah, it's useless. So but now what, you're playing FIFA 22 or 20, 21, I'm guessing? That. 21, haven't got FIFA 22 yet. And uh, have you been playing it here much or no? Cause you, I, I think can you only play it here. Because you can o- yeah. in, in my boarding house we don't have a PS4, but like when we go to year nine we will have a PS4 and we can play P- FIFA I can play it with my friends. It'd be pretty fun. Because I remember you said you wanted to do some maybe Twitch or YouTube gaming and have a stream going. Is this still something you, you're thinking about or it's just too difficult with boarding? Difficult with boarding. Would you ever do that in the, the future? Maybe like, uh, c- could this be a possibility? 
Maybe. Do you have any friends doing this? I know Philip was doing it. He was doing some uh, uh, streaming, right? Is, is how is his channel doing? Is it rocketed off or what's going on? No, it's a bit, it's a bit dead right now. I think I'm not sure. I haven't really watched it, but my my friend Connor, he's in Ireland right, no, in Wales right now. He's he's not really a Twitch streamer. He he did he streams a tiny bit, but he has like a hundred and twelve k on TikTok. I just that's quite a standard. But now he's posting Fortnite videos. No one is liking it. <laughs> Why not? Well, everyone used to like his uh videos. Like your swimming pool is basically like your future, but it isn't. It's just saying. It's this is your swimming pool if you do such and such on. So mm-hmm. if you if you scroll scroll past the video, you'll get some like dirty pool with no water in it. And if you follow, well, if you do all of it, and you don't scroll, you'll get like and the what, biggest what, pool alive. What, what is this? It's TikTok. What I, oh, I don't TikTok. know. TikTok. Never heard of. Do you know what that is, Hans? I have no. Idea. It's 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 like a game on TikTok. No, it's not a game on TikTok. It's just. He posts it, mm. and he says like, s- like he sa- he says on his video, scroll, like if if you scroll, you'll get some rubbish pool. Mm. If you comment, you'll get a decent pool. If you get if you like, you'll get an or a better pool than the decent pool. And then if you follow, you get a really nice pool. If you do all of it, you'll get the best pool alive. And then, but nothing happens. It's kind of just no. chatter. No. Yeah, Nothing happens I don't think at all. Getting a pool. Just, but I remember, th- I remember, I remember that uh, video. That's the only video I remember from him. Mm. I think he got like seven hundred ninety-three thousand likes. He went but viral. It was so crazy. He's gone viral now. So is he? Uh, is he a bit of a superstar in his town, or what's going on? No, <coughs> no one knows him. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, you, you've traveled uh, for such a young age. You've traveled around the world quite a bit. I mean, you've been to Italy. You've been to... I don't think you've been to the U.S., no. no. Uh, you've been to Japan. Obviously, all over uh, Southeast Asia, Indonesia, Singapore, Thailand. Um, where, where's your favorite destination? Well, my mom's favorite is probably Italy because of food. I, I also love the food there. We we normally go to this town called Alba. Yeah. The ravioli there is just it's too good. Way too good. Yeah, this town it's quite famous for the white truffle and they just had that season that ended in November as yeah. well. So yeah. you would try to go around for your mom's birthday uh, yeah. around then. Um but you haven't been back in a couple of years because of the current situation. Yeah. Um what what did you do this summer for for traveling while you were in the UK? Did you end up leaving or did you kind of just stay in the UK the whole time? We stayed in the UK, just went around the UK quite a lot. And on the way met my granddad who was in an amazing condition but my dad's company prob- probably made him better, so it was pretty good. Just seeing him was good. You saw him, and do you, do you get to see him often now? Being at boarding, or you, uh, or even your your go to see your uncles, I your uncle. My uncle is here right now. Oh, correct. Yes. But uh, no, nah, not really, because I'm in I'm in Glastonbury, which is three hours and thirty minutes away from from Leicester, which is where they live, and on a minibus. Well, on a bus, I think it's like five hours, so I'm not willing to go there. But I have a friend uh, who lives in Bath, so I, s- I stay with him when it's like a holiday or something. Yeah, and I, I remember you were supposed to go to the British Open, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Did you end up going or no? No, 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 it was too far away from Glastonbury because Glastonbury is like, the UK is like that. Yeah. Glastonbury is like over there. And I think Royal St. George's was where it's played. I think that's in Kent. It's all the way there. That's like five hours from car. And my dad wasn't willing to go. Yeah, but we would have had free tickets because one of our one of my mum's friends, Thomas Levey, uh, booked us in. 
but it didn't end up going. So. Yeah, it's a bit of a hike, right? I mean, it's not. Uh, it was a five-hour drive or something, right? Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything else special you kind of did ov- over the the holidays that was more memorable? Not really. I mean, play for a cricket team, and stress fractured my back. Oh yeah, what happened there? So I remember playing. I forgot. Got the team, but we were full on dominating. I think they were like twenty eight runs for seven wickets. Like I, re- I just remember going in for a d- for a bowl and uh, my bat just tweaked. I didn't th- I didn't think much, and then my second delivery, I I just went, I went on the ground. I I just couldn't walk. And like my mum was there. I like. The pain kind of did relief, but like it took me at least like four minutes to get back to the clubhouse, and uh, I remember just sitting down, my back so painful. Like after probably a week, my back was feeling just a bit better, and they they were one man short, my brother's team, and uh, his coach Andy decided to put me in, and I collapsed on the pitch while feeding, building. And uh, one of the guys said oh, I got shot, so he was Look. trying to make the mickey out of me. But uh, my dad came onto the pitch and he was like, Oh, you're wasting time. <laughs> 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 Yet to know, I stress fractured my back and I was 10 weeks off sport. Were you, were you devastating. Were you in the hospital the whole time? No. No, not the hospital. I was just kind of, you had to have bed rest and... and did, was there anything, you didn't have to do surgery or, or did it kind of, what, what ended up happening? It went away? Well, so when I arrived at the school, I did loads of stretching before that and uh, the pain kind of relieved a bit. But then I did another cricket session and my back just, I, I just couldn't play cricket anymore. That's why I'm afraid of playing cricket again. It's also because of, you, you're a bowler and you got to, you know, you're you're going full speed there as well, and it's very easy yeah. to tweak it as, right? Yeah. So, yeah. are you are you going to take a break from cricket for a year, or what do you think? Not a year, hopefully not a year, because I love cricket, mm. but quite a bit. I ho- hopefully, I can get back stronger than ever. So, it's just hopefully. So do the subscribers; they love you. <laughs> Let's get him back on his feet. Um, now you're here for Christmas. You're in Phuket. Um, how long are you staying? When are you going back? I'm not staying long. I think I'm only staying for three weeks. I think I'm going back on January the 3rd. That's quick, yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure though. I'm not, I'm not sure. Any major plans to see friends? Go mini putting, go golfing, go play some, well, obviously, maybe not cricket. Well, my friends invited me to watch the new Spider Man movie. Venom, no? Or Spider Man? I don't know what it is, but. No, it's Spider Man. Spider Man? Yeah. I, I don't know much about the movie. But <laughs> when are you going to see that? 23rd. 23rd, yeah. Yeah. Maybe have a mini putt with you. There we go. Well, but you're rubbish. I'll absolutely destroy <laughs> you. <laughs> He's rubbish. Yeah, right. We might need him to come <laughs> replace you. He's <laughs> rubbish. <laughs> Shouldn't be allowed there. Didn't I? I absolutely. I destroyed you last time. No, you did not. Yeah, you shot like 70 at that. <laughs> You're waffling. <laughs> You're such a waffler. <laughs> yeah, it's a joke, well. man. This is a bummer class setup. <laughs> we'll see. Hey, let, we'll we'll end up. Uh, I'll do, I'll be doing a vlog. We're bringing the whole team out there. We're gonna vlog that mini putt challenge and see what happens. Sure. Yeah, let's go. Come on. No, you are rubbish there. <laughs> All right. Well, you're, I'll I'll take down your brother too, and yeah, you're my brother. Da- yeah, you I are. think you're gonna beat him? <laughs> you can't beat him. I can. I think I beat you last time. No. No, you didn't. All right, let's see. We'll put a. I'll, I'll you, beat me, you beat me when I uh, when I was using my uh, mouth to grip onto the club. <laughs> it's like the only time you beat me. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll bet you a Hershey's bar. Let's see who wins. Hershey's is rubbish now. What's your new treat? Cadbury, hundred percent. Cadbury, what? The mini eggs or what? Or the chocolate bar? Just Cadbury normal dairy milk chocolate bars. Okay. Delight. They don't have that over here. I don't think we have that in Phuket. No. No. I mean, my friend was saying that they had all of the UK snacks. He was, like, saying there was Terry's chocolate orange. Do you know that? Yeah. Uh, he was saying it was here. 
I couldn't find any of it. Yeah, he, I don't know. He's a bit of a joker, jokester. And I probably need to go to Villa or Central or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah I checked Villa. He said that there was Lucas Aid. There was no Lucas Aid at all. It's Chris Cunningham, by the way. Chris. Oh, shout out to Chris. No, no, shout shout out for the wrong reasons there. <laughs> don't give him don't give him the shout out. <laughs> don't give him the shout out. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> um are, are most of your friends is Philip still here? Are most of your friends here for the Christmas break or Yeah, they, they don't want to go to a cold country. Yeah, of course. They wanna they wanna stay here. Are you gonna be are you gonna see Philip? I've already seen him. Yeah. At the night market. How's he doing? Uh he's doing well. He's got a new haircut, looks a bit different. No more Bieber haircut? I thought he had that, that Bieber haircut going on for a I couple. I don't even know what Bieber looks like. You yeah, you do. <laughs> I do like face wise, but I'm not sure about the cut. Yeah, well, I think. Uh, anyways, Philip knows what I'm saying. He's probably gonna slap me later. Um, <laughs> but Philip's massive there. Is he getting tall now? 173 centimeters. Oh. Five seven. Oh, oh, he's always gonna be taller than me soon. Yeah, probably. You're small. Yeah, good. <laughs> My brother's taller than you. <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, yeah, he is. Yeah, he's is. he's getting up there now, but uh, I got that pumpuy weight. That you still got bit of fat on you zingers <laughs> that belly's just made up of zingers so the kfc zinger burgers no, i laid off the zingers i was getting out of control i had to take it down a notch i was probably doing like two or three a week and there was a point in time i sat down and told myself that's that's enough zingers i think you've had t- one too many you wouldn't be the guy to do that <laughs> you would never you would never do that there was a uh, it was yeah it was just they're too delicious sunday afternoon zinger burgers come on it's a great time. Grab a uh, food panda on the go. Yeah, exactly. It's the best. Um, so wh- what's next for you? You're going to get back to school. Is there anything interesting happening in the, the next semester? Uh, not really. Get, I guess the weather's going to be colder. Yeah, I mean, going back in January in the UK. Uh, I mean, you're not going to get snow or anything, right? Maybe, maybe. You never know. In Leicester, it's snowing. That's uh, no, I, I, that's why I can never leave Phuket. The snow and the cold, oh my god! Yeah, Canada's really snowing a lot. Yeah, I'm I think a few days ago, I remember I saw the news. There was like, uh, what do you call it? From the mountains, like s- snowfall or something. Yeah, I'm sure the skiing's starting to pick up there as well. But no, I'm not going. It's too too cold. I can't handle it. I'm Phuket for life. Um, uh, so so. You also mentioned, while well, we, we had this discussion, you, you went to Japan, you do your skiing there. Uh, talk a little bit about that, that journey and those trips. So in Japan, uh, I think we go, I forgot which part of Japan we go to, but we, we ski at a hotel called Club Med. And the skiing sometimes is for beginners and sometimes it's quite advanced. There's different like bibs. So if you're a black bib at my age... I think black bibs like the best. I'm a white bib, so I'm just below black bib. So like black bibs like doing all the tricks, competitions. I, I'm not at the comp- competition level yet. I'm not amazing. Or allowing you to go on different uh, trails or different uh, slopes, right? I mean, you can't. It's like you can't just go on any like the more difficult ones. It'd be too dangerous. Yeah, definitely. So you you need to be supervised, anyways, if you. W- if you want to go uh, on one of the big slopes, yeah, and and how how's your brother and your mom? They're they're decent uh, skiers. My brother's decent. My um, I haven't seen much of my mom, but she says she's all right. Mm. Doubt it. <laughs> uh oh, we'll have to cut that part out. We can't. She can't be seeing that. It's all right. Her cooking's good there. That's <laughs> all she needs to be, and, and a great mom. What? Oh, what a nice guy. That's you're gonna be picking up all the ladies with that attitude. Um, <laughs> what is uh, what what do you think you're gonna be eating tonight? Because I when I talked to your mom. She said she was cooking you kind of. Uh, she did a pasta with some foie gras. Uh, what, what what's in store tonight? What's on the plate? Pasta and foie gras again. No, no, just for tonight because I I've got this podcast very, very high class, you know. And uh, I've got football training after, so like 
It's a bit of a walk workout, so mentally kind of a treat. Mentally and physically. Yeah. So you got where are you going? You're going to play with your, your friends or is it kind of like a camp they're doing over the, the Christmas holiday? Not sure actually. What training are you doing tonight? You're not gonna be playing with the third the, the, the football for fatties, no? <laughs> no, not football for fatties. <laughs> I'm not I'm not with you, you're too fat. <laughs> It should be football for uh, skinnies. Yeah. So where where do you, do you know where you're going? Is your dad taking you? Is Dom joining? Yeah, it's a private lesson. Oh, okay. With uh, with who? Do you know? Berlin. Berlin. Uh, okay. Couldn't do it this morning because uh, I think he was at immigration or something like that. Oh, okay. And where where do you end up doing this private lesson? At the football for fatties venue, at close to Kajon Ka Ket. Oh, High okay. School. Yeah, I know that spot. That pitch is. But there's two pitches there. That one pitch, it's too hard, I find. Yeah, the pitch that you guys play on oh, is it's too hard. Oh, terrible. Yeah, it's rubbish. That's why I stopped going, because when you run around, it feels like you're just running on concrete. The codron kit's not bad. Yeah, but the goals are too small. Yeah. The goals are, it's like a, like a seven-a-side pitch with five-a-side goals. It doesn't make any sense. That's why I stopped going, because, I mean, I'm a legend of a keeper, and I just, no one could score, so I was like, I can't come here anymore. It's a bit harsh. <laughs> I I had to come. I had to be fair to the footballs for fatties, you know. They, uh, I was uh, crushing their 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 will to live. Nah, your reputation there was uh, <laughs> crushed <laughs> by uh, what Andy. <laughs> Andy was destroying you. <laughs> Shots from long distance. Yeah, Andy. Greg with the three balls. You think you'd be able to keep up with those older guys now? Are you ready yet? My dad says I'm not big enough. Not yet. Yeah, I get, get a bit aggressive, especially. I don't think they all have all their balance, so if someone was to trip yeah. on you, it might and be Andy trouble. Said he, Andy said uh, we don't do any slide tackles and stuff. Two minutes after watching them, Andy came in with a gruesome <laughs> challenge. <laughs> <laughs> no slide tackles. He could have killed someone. Well, cleats were up, yeah? Yeah. Cleats. Is that, that, what, is that what you call them? What do you call them? Studs. Studs. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's a baseball turn. Cleats. Who knows? So, what do you think of of the podcast? How are we doing so far? We, is this uh, you're, you're subscribing? You're liking every week, or what's going on? Liking every video. Yeah. Yeah, just regularly. Not not watching much. Got a lot of. Uh, you're busy. <laughs> no, not really. Just like I'm not. I'm not a man who would watch a lot, a lot of videos. I'm that man who would go sometimes a lot. Outside, play a bit of football. Which is better, and you at least to stay active as well. Yeah. Um, we're going to jump ahead because we're probably getting close to an hour and 20, hour and 10. Yeah. Um, so I, I want to pass, pass this on. So, and again, the, the point of this kind of podcast, it's to discuss with you of, of your journey from Singapore to Phuket and, and, and also being involved in these international schools because there are a lot of kids that will relate to that as well. Um, in, in general, being, you know, growing up in these international schools, um, out of the last three that you've, you've went to, is there a favorite and why? Uh, SAI. It was quite a Catholic school, but I never went to the church in our school. And, uh, like the facilities there wasn't amazing. BISP was a bit of a step up, but Millfield just tops it. It's uh, n number one, right? Yeah. And did oh. I think that the the current Thai king did he also? I think he went to Millfield, right? Is that correct, or maybe yeah. I'm wrong? Yeah. He did go to Millfield. So you get a lot of famous people going there as well. Uh, David Beckham's kids. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anyone else that's like uber famous going to the school? I think a K-pop person goes there. I'm not. I'm not sure. K like K-pop's child. I think so. Yeah. Not an actual K-pop singer. Then uh, maybe. maybe I'll ask my brother. I'll have to check that out. All right, we're going to wrap this up on the Fruiting Body podcast. And before we jump out, um, well, we, we probably won't give away Oliver's uh, Instagram handle because we don't want everyone to, or unless you, do you want people to, because are they going to follow you? You're not posting anyways, right? No, I don't really care. I just have it to text my friends. But I think let, let's uh, do a final shout out because where can people expect you on on the, the Leicester team and maybe the, the next uh, few years? I mean, can we get an autograph here and just so maybe you can sign the board? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, any any final words to your friends, your family, and and uh, just some words of wisdom to my friends? Please subscribe to uh, Fruiting Body Podcast. Your man's right here. He he needs his subscribers desperately. Well, you heard that. All right, guys. He called it out. You got to subscribe. We're going to keep this channel growing. Um, we are hoping to be, I think we, if we're getting one of the biggest podcasts, uh, in, in Phuket and if not Thailand as Farangs, let's say. Um, so thank you so much, Oliver, for joining us. Um, we'll be posting this uh, next week, I believe. And, uh, yeah, don't forget like, and subscribe. Peace out. Thanks everybody. Thanks.